Hello, I'm JW, and in this video I've got a piece of testing equipment to have a look at. Uh, this is a device used to check the quality of insulation on newly installed cabling and wires, and these are, uh, or at least were commonly referred to as megas, although of course today uh, many different manufacturers actually make them. Now this is a fairly old piece of equipment, and it dates uh, prior to the introduction of electronics, and it comes in this nice leather case. So uh, we'll uh, open that up, have a look inside. And at the top on there, you can see it has a bit of wording on it, which has worn off. So let's open that and see what's inside. Now here's the thing, and it comes in this old type leather case with the substantial leather strap there and the buckle and everything. The case is rather dirty. It's been in there, some stored in someone's garage for several decades probably, and the clip is somewhat rusty. So. Inside we've got this uh, horrid uh, collection of old wire, most of which is rather somewhat damaged. Looks like that's been on fire there at some point in the past, as it's just uh, gone into dust. The rest of it is some kind of uh, cotton-covered, uh, rubber-insulated type of stuff, and it has a uh, clip on the end there. So uh, we don't need to uh, concern ourselves with that. Let's just get rid of those uh, burnt pieces. Now, let's take out the actual uh, device itself. And as you can see, it does have this handle on the end, which we have to use to extract it from the case. Now here's the uh, top view of the device. As you see, we've got a uh, analog uh, meter in the centre here with the uh, pointer there for various uh, types of readings. Over here we've got the uh, name Mega, and it says 500 volts, uh, registered trademark, made in England obviously, and the uh, pattern number there as well. And over this side, uh, Evershed and Vignoles and Acton Lane Works, uh, Chiswick, London, West 4. And uh, this is, as I say, a very old piece of device. Handle on this side actually just folds out like that. And we've got the two buttons here, which are actually spring-loaded terminals. And uh, there's a uh, fixture here to put the uh, wire in each side. And as you see, that's now closed there. And if you press the button, that just opens the uh, terminal so you can insert the wire. And then it just springs back to hold it in position. And on this side, uh, exactly the same arrangement over there. This appears to be made out of probably Bakelite. It's sort of a reddish-brown uh, swirl type of pattern. Uh, on the back here, which is fairly scratched, just got the uh, little rubber feet here and uh, four fixing screws, one of which is actually covered over with some kind of cement or uh, other filler material. But uh, other than that, it's in reasonable condition. So the bottom's fairly scratched, obviously, from uh, being used, but the uh, rest of it is... Uh, quite reasonable. And on this end, of course, here's the handle to operate the device. No batteries required here. And that just actually would uh, rotate thus to uh, generate the required voltages. Now the uh, leather case of this has uh, this imprint on the uh, opening flap here, the uh, London Lancashire Insurance Company Limited. And the uh, scale of the device uh, also has the uh, same uh, printing here, though it's uh, in full there. It's also got their address of 7 Chancellor Lane, WC2. 500 volts at the top, and the serial number there, which is 821418. And then we've got the scale here, which goes essentially from zero, or short circuit, uh, through the uh, sort of many hundreds of thousands of ohms, up into the mega ohms range, and of course up to effectively infinity at this end. And if you're going to test the uh, installation of a cable, then this is where the end you want it to be at in terms of the uh, well minimum of 20, 50 or the uh, infinity setting really. Anything down here would certainly indicate some kind of a problem. And certainly if obviously down here you've got a basic short circuit, so uh, of course that's going to be no use to anybody. Now the principle of these things is uh, very simple. All you're doing essentially is measuring the resistance of the cable that you've attached to it. Normally that will be part of an installation that you've just completed. And it simply applies 500 volts uh, between the two wires, and then just shows the uh, results on this scale. And uh, modern, of course, instruments are battery-powered, full of electronics, and uh, generate 500 volts via some electronic circuit. Of course, this was designed before electronics came around, or at least uh, transistorized ones, and uh, given it would be pretty impractical to lug a uh, vacuum tube testing machine around all over the place, the voltage was generated via turning this handle. And turning the handle uh, simply turns inside the device a uh, generator, or basically a uh, dynamo or similar, which generates the 500 volts. And then the needle will display the resistance as appropriate. 
So does this device still work? Well, of course, there's an easy way to find out. So uh, at the moment, we've got nothing attached to either of the uh, wires at the side. So essentially, we should get the uh, essentially infinite reading way up over here, assuming it works. And uh, obviously, we'll just turn the handle and see where the needle goes. So, so we should get a uh, basically infinity reading there. So uh, let's see if it does. Well, we do, so that's fairly promising. It seems to go up to the uh, top end there. And conversely, if we uh, attach a short circuit or some kind of fault here, it should go down to the bottom end. Now, as the device came with some horrendous, disgusting old wire, I thought I might as well uh, use that to uh, create the short circuit. So we'll just insert one end of the wire here, and then the other end, of course, in the terminal over the back. So it just clips in there, and then we'll uh, hold in securely when the button is released. So in this case, we should get uh, basically a zero reading, as clearly this is a uh, short circuit, sort of simulating a fault somewhere on the cable that was installed earlier. And so turn the handle, we should get the needle over this side. And um, pretty obviously, I mean, hardly have to turn it at all and uh, straight over the uh, zero shorted out section. So it certainly seems to work appropriately. Now the scale here is obviously non-linear, and it's got one mega ohm actually in the centre there. So uh, if I use this uh, one meg resistor here, then uh, we should be able to get it to uh, point to the centre of the scale. So I'll attach this to this uh, horrendous piece of wire, and then uh, just put that between the two terminals and see if we can get the one mega ohm reading. I've just soldered that on there with some disgusting lead-free solder. So it's just connected here, and then obviously the rest of the wire is over there. So uh, just insert that into the... Uh, side terminal, and of course the uh, other end into the terminal over here. And so we should get that sort of middle one meg reading, assuming the thing is uh, anywhere near where it should be. Well, sure enough, it's uh, pretty much bang on there. So uh, despite its age, it seems to be uh, working perfectly. So, a quality piece of equipment, and uh, still seems to work uh, within its uh, specification. So, uh, what we'll do now, I think, just have a quick look inside. Just take off these uh, four screws on the back and uh, look in there. Now, so this one seems to be filled up with some sort of resin material. So, uh, just have to uh, sort of go in and dig that out if we can. No doubt, put there to uh, provide some kind of warranty or uh, possible tamper-proof thing. Not entirely sure what this is. It doesn't appear to be. Uh, Resin at all. It looks like some kind of metallic uh, material there. It's certainly an unusual uh, looking type of substance, but nevertheless, it comes out. I'm uh, feeling that might be lead actually. Yes, I'd say that was definitely a uh, lead plug of some kind, as it's uh, just uh, squeezing it there and applies is very easy and it uh, shines up uh, fairly well. So. Uh, Fairly unusual, some sort of lead seal. So anyway, a warranty, of course, now uh, completely void, so uh, we can't return it to the manufacturer for repair. So let's just open the uh, screws up and have a look inside. Right, so there we go. Now uh, the question is, is the mechanism in the top or the bottom of the uh, casing? Just let those screws drop out. Right, so if we come in for the uh, top view then, let's remove that screw from that. Notice these are actually high quality brass here, they're uh, just tapped at the end here with a uh, smooth piece uh, higher up there. And uh, a little bit of grease on something on the end to presumably stop them jamming in the holes. So let's have a look under the cover. Right, well, the lid is, say, just a solid uh, Bakelite piece. Uh, see how thick the casing is there. It's a point of uh, five or six millimetres or something. And uh, so that's fairly common for Bakelite items being uh, the way that they're just moulded in uh, from a chemical mixture there. So probably uh, sort of quarter inch or about six millimetres there. Uh, the window uh, is actually plastic, uh, or is it? Yeah, it feels like plastic. Hmm, job to tell, really. 
anyway it doesn't feel particularly cold so uh, presumably not glass. Now the buttons here of course just press onto these uh, little terminals here and they're so just a piece of brass there with a hole in the middle and of course there's a spring in the bottom that uh, the black piece then just presses onto and again this side be exactly the same just a uh, brass piece with a hole in the center a spring in the bottom there so here's the uh, meter movement uh, incoming terminals on each side here and again that's those brass bits with the uh, hole in the middle a spring down in the bottom and uh, this is basically just a uh, normal uh, moving coil meter and the uh, needle on this one isn't actually fixed in any one position sort of quite free to uh, float there on uh, a lot of them because there's a spring to return it to one position or the other this doesn't have to have that assuming it uh, ever did but uh, as you see it just uh, moves there perfectly fine scale of course uh, just uh, screwed on with those small screws there let's just see if we can undo the uh, scale and have a look underneath So the scale there is uh, just a uh, steel piece with a uh, white painted and the uh, black printing on it. Some uh, numbers on the back there, 821418, so uh, not entirely clear what those actually mean. It doesn't appear to be any kind of date anyway, so that's that piece there. And then we can see inside the uh, sort of meter movement there, so nothing uh, particularly unusual about that. Uh, here's a close look at the top part here, hence the handle uh, just comes in here and it's got some kind of uh, slip mechanism on it so that uh, it only goes in the one direction so that way it will rotate and then this way there's a, uh, a slip on it so it uh, just goes back without actually turning the cogs and again fairly straightforward just straight through to this gear here and then via the other gears here onto the one at the back and of course that's what drives the uh, generating part uh, within here on the side here there's just a single resistor and uh, what appears to be uh, some kind of electrolytic capacitor there and then these appear also to be uh, some form of capacitor though uh, quite uh, strange in construction there's sort of no outer can on them you can actually see the individual uh, layers sort of wound and twisted around there that's quite difficult to see there but you can see the uh, some of the wording on that uh, central capacitor in there 1.1 might be the uh, rating of that one and then the others uh, the uh, sort of rather presumably covered in some kind of shellac or varnish there that one's got the number 5000 on the side and you see the individual uh, layers sort of all uh, twisted together there and then uh, say a similar arrangement with that one there we go it's uh, say fairly to see without sort of destroying the uh, device totally and uh, taking it out of there but uh, there we go and that's uh, pretty much it other than they've just got a few uh, say, wires coming across from the various terminals and obviously for the uh, between the capacitors here going over to the meter and again on the side the wire from the uh, generator going to the meter there and then you've got your other connection to the outside world as it were over that side and the case at the bottom again is this uh, molded bakelite material again about a quarter inch thickness again that's all molded in one piece just the uh, four holes in the corner for the fixing screws. So it's a fairly old piece of uh, testing equipment there and uh, still in full working order despite the fact that it's uh, 50 plus years old. Now there's no actual date on the device or the casing but the fact that it has the London and Lancashire Insurance Company on it puts it to before 1961 as apparently that company was uh, combined or amalgamated into some other one from the early 60s. So 1950s probably or maybe earlier and the glass piece on the front, uh, it is actually glass, I believe. It's uh, obviously not uh, plastic. It's uh, say a bit difficult to tell, but uh, it does uh, appear to uh, scratch or uh, feel like glass, certainly on the edges. So uh, certainly glass and a Bakelite case there. And uh, say no chips or damage anywhere on it, apart from there's a bit of uh, scratching on the base, but uh, that's to be expected given the fact that it would have been, of course, resting on a surface and uh, no doubt scratched when in use. So until next time, Thanks for watching.